Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to easily make a good and uh, reactive main menu inside of Unity. Alright, so here I have this uh, completely empty scene, a completely empty project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by creating a uh, going to UI and creating a new canvas. Uh, so on your canvas everything um, uh, that is UI related is, um, is placed. And what I'm going to uh, go and do, I'm going to go over here to UI scale mode and then say scale with screen size and then set reference to, uh, resolution to 1600 by 900 and then I'm gonna go to game and set this also to 16 by 9 and this will make it so that our uh, canvas is always scaling uh, is always displaying in a good way on your screen then I'm gonna go to render mode and go to screen space camera and then I'm gonna drag and drop my, my main camera in here and um, set order and layer to 100 so it will render on top of everything and that's basically uh, all the canvas options then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna right click and create a new empty game object which is gonna be main menu and this is going to be our well our main menu so uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to ui and i'm gonna import uh, click text text mesh pro then it's gonna ask me to import so let's import it now you could use uh, Unity's default text, however uh, with TextMesh Pro you get way more options and you can way easier, uh, way more easy uh, put a different font in here. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one uh, because why not? And if you want to see how to import your own font then I will leave a link to that video in the description. Alright, so here I'm gonna just say uh, game name. So this will be, well, the name of our game. And when doing UI I always like to go to the uh, game view because then you can uh, see uh, what what it will look like on your screen. Uh, now let's say this uh, long title, so something like uh, game name the first something. Then you can see that it goes like this, and you don't want that. What you can do then is increase the width. So I always like to set it to like 500, and then here we can align our text in the middle, and we can increase our font size. Let's set it to something like 50, make it bold. But let's hold Alt uh, uh, Alt and Shift, and then press this right here so now it is going up and we can move it like this uh, so let's set it to something like 300 uh, maybe no even higher 350 and if you go over here and press maximize then you can see it looks good all right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna uh, say uh, change the name of this object to game name text and then i'm gonna copy this text and i'm gonna move it down and i'm gonna move it down to 250 gonna disable the uh, bolt and I'm gonna decrease the size of the text to something like 40 and here I'm gonna say play uh, game and it's actually too small let's get it back to 45 um, and this will be our first button uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna go add component and we're gonna be adding a button uh, buttons are basically well they're buttons you can press them and it will uh, change something so let's uh, first of all make sure interactable is uh, selected and set transition to animation. And let's not do anything with this yet. Let's add to navigation and set none. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna create a new folder, which I'm just gonna call animations. Uh, these folders are not mandatory, but they can uh, they help by making everything more organized. And I'm also gonna change this to play game button. And then I'm gonna go down here and basically this is what will happen when we hover over it and all of that. So I'm gonna press auto generate animation and then I'm gonna make sure that I have my right folder and I'm just gonna call this uh, menu button. There we go. Uh, you can now see that it made a animator controller and that it's also on here. And it has autom automatically generated all of these transitions and all of these uh, animations, but we just have to actually make them. So let's go to, anim uh, to window, animation, and then animation. And then I'm here you can uh, see the animation timeline. So when we hit record right here, then any uh, change that is made here uh, will be recorded in your animation and will be played when you play the an animation. So under the normal, I'm just gonna change the um, Z axis to one and then back to zero just so that nothing changes and that it's a, a constant loop. Uh, and then I'm gonna go uh, press here and go to uh, highlight it. So this is when you're hovering over it. I'm gonna press play and I'm gonna press R to go to scale mode, then scale it up quite a bit. And I'm gonna press 
uh, the record button, so to disable recording. Then I'm gonna go to pressed and I'm gonna record again, press R again and make it a bit bigger but not as big as the highlighted version. So there we go. Uh, then uh, it will already work but there's just one more thing that we need to change about this which is going to animation and then animator this will basically be all of the uh, animation so here you can see your normal animation your press animation your highlighted and the selected and disabled we weren't we aren't going to be using so i'm going to put them over here uh, what i want to do is i want to press these transitions and then uh, go to settings and set transition duration to only 0.10 and i'll do that by all three of these so that it will uh, look a lot more a lot snappier so if we press play now you can see that if we hover over it you can see that it will work and if we press then it will also work uh, so that's great now let's uh, go over here and then uh, copy this and uh, press w so we can use a transform set position y to 150 so it's a 100 uh, difference and then i'm gonna just say um, like settings uh, button that's what I'm gonna call it. And here I'm gonna say settings. Then I'm gonna copy it again. I'm gonna call this quit, oh, quit button. And I'm gonna set the position to 50. Here I'm gonna say quit. And now if we press play, you can see that all three of them have the, uh, have the animation. They get bigger and you are eager, or at least I am eager to, uh, to press them. Uh, but let's actually add some functionality to them. So I'm gonna go to my assets. I'm gonna create a new folder, which I'm gonna call scripts. Once again, this is not mandatory. It's just to keep everything organized. Then I'm gonna create a new script, which I'm gonna call main menu. All right, now in here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import a new, um, a new namespace. So here you have the three basic ones. I'm gonna go and select uh, do using, and then I'm gonna go unity engine management so that we can actually transition between scenes uh, and everything work uh, will work fine i'm going to delete the two basic functions and i'm going to create a new function which is going to be a public void uh, play game uh, the reason we make it public is so that we can easily call it through our button that we just made uh, and in here all i want to do is i'm going to say scene manager dot load scene and i'm going to say scene manager dot get active scene dot build index so what this will do is it will call our scene manager to load a scene and that will uh, and this will get our active scene and then the number that it is in then we're going to say plus one so it will load the next scene um, and that's really all that we have to do here uh, and i'm going to create another public void which i'm going to call quit game once again public so that we can exit it exit it to uh, through the button and in here it's going to be a lot easier i'm just going to say application dot quit but unity won't actually quit uh, when in the editor so i'm going to say debug dot lock quitting game so that we can actually see that we are quitting the game without having to you know actually close the game uh, and that's basically it. Let's now head back into Unity. In here, I'm going to create a new empty game object, which we're just going to call main menu for now. I'm going to reset its transform and put our script on there. There we go. We don't have to assign any variables. So we go to the play game button. I'm going to go here to the button component and then on click. I'm going to press plus. So a new action. I'm going to drag and drop our main menu on here. Then I'm going to go to the function, then the main menu script. And I'm going to press uh, play game. Then I'm gonna go to the quit button. I'm gonna do the same thing. So add a new action, drag and drop our main menu, um, and then select our main menu and select quit game. I'm gonna create a new scene, uh, scene, and I'm gonna call this just level one. And I'm gonna open it up and there isn't anything in here. So I'm gonna go back to file, build settings, and I'm gonna press add open scenes, which will add our level one scene. Then I'm gonna go back to our uh, sample scene. I'm gonna press play. If we go and press, if we go and press quit, you can see that it will say quitting game. Obviously, it won't quit the engine. Um, settings doesn't do anything yet. And if we press play game, then you can see it will have loaded level one. I'm gonna go and copy our main menu, and I'm gonna change this to settings menu, and then I'm gonna disable uh, our main menu. And in here, I'm gonna change a couple of things. So here, this I'm gonna say instead of the game name, I'm gonna say settings. And uh, I'm going to be removing these two buttons, which can be uh, settings like audio and graphic settings and all of that. And I'm going to change the quit button. I'm going to call it back button. I'm going to 
set here back. Now, um, we don't have to actually write any code for this, so I'm gonna be removing this uh, on click and I'm gonna uh, adding another one and I'm gonna drag and drop our current settings menu in there uh, add a new function so game object set active and I'm gonna disable this so uh, basically when we press this our current menu will be disabled then uh, add another function go to our main menu and do the same thing so game object and a set active but this time it's gonna be actually active then I'm gonna go and disable our settings menu go to main menu uh, enable it again go to our settings button and do the same thing but then the other way around so add two events uh, events the first will be our main menu uh, game object set active is going to be false and then settings menu settings menu uh, game object set active and true once again if we press settings then we go here and if i press back then we go back here and we can do that an infinite amount of times uh, here you will obviously be putting uh, a bunch of settings and you can also put a background and you can add some cool things but for now I think this is uh, this is right and if we can press play game and uh, we enter our game so I go I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you guys in the next one